welcome along to the top 10 units in late antiquity and i have done a few other top 10 lists i started with high middle ages and i actually did two versions for high middle ages because we've had some dlcs so you can check out those videos if you want to i am also working on a top 10 for classical um, but because i'm doing um, a video analysis series right at the moment on late antiquity i am going to do a top 10 and we're going to start with the Romans and I'm going to say for number 10 it's going to be the legionnaires pretty boring isn't it going <laughs> trying to get away from the Romans and the legionnaires and uh, even in this period I'm going to include the Romans but they are at 10 they're not in the top five but I took out this is actually the Roman 197 uh, list uh, which I did use in LA and uh, in the league and um, I did really quite well with them um, pretty strong army a bit of a hammer army because these are all impact and I've got in um, in this army I've got 10 units at 1600 points and I can even take out a guard unit as well plus some of the medium foot which is good as well because it's armored um, but these legionnaires they smash through a lot of infantry in LA um, they're about 150 up against Sassanid foot and Arab foot um, Pictish spear on impact and against the swordsman units they're 75 up in melee and against the Pictish spear they're 37 up in melee even against other impact um, troops imitation legionnaires they're 50 up on impact 62 up in melee war bands 40 up on impact 75 up in melee and even the superior war band they're only 10 down on impact and then they're 25 up in melee so they are a real hammer hammer of a unit they just smash through a lot of infantry units and in my opinion i've said this a few times um they are stronger in la compared to classical because in classical they're up against pikes veteran spear armored hoplites but the infantry isn't as good in la as it is in classical so they are a really strong unit and um a worthy inclusion i think uh in my top 10 and they even do quite well against cavalry um on impact they're evens against a lot of lancers um the roman lancers they're actually 50 up um on impact 50 up in melee noble cav they're 50 up on impact 25 up in melee byzantine lancers they're 38 up on impact 38 up in melee so even against cavalry they can hold their own they can hold their own so definitely worthy inclusion on my list at number 10. at number nine on my list i'm going to go for the noble lancers they represent superb value for money because they're only 48 and yet they are superior quality lancers so they are absolutely fantastic um, great poa advantage for being lancers and then you have the quality as well and if you compare them to something like byzantine lancers they're actually more expensive um, they do better they do better so um, noble lancers against bedu cav are 50 up but byzantine lancers are only 12 up because if you remember um, even though the Byzantine Lancers have armor, we don't count armor on the impact phase. So Noble Lancers do better there. Um, and then in melee, the Noble Lancers are 50 up on the Light Lancers, the Bedu Cav in melee, and Byzantine Lancers are only 37 up. So for 48, they really do represent great value for money. Um, it's a pity that you don't get access to them in so many lists also a lot of lists if you do have the option to take them it's usually only one or two so with the byzantine list that's one of the pluses of this list you get six um, but they really are 
um, a great unit and I'd also include kind of among this um, the light lancers as well any kind of lancers that are in the mid range because a lot of armies do get the armored noble lancers but 64 is a lot so um, even though I've been quite critical of Byzantine lancers um, 54 is still a fair price um, and then the light lancers that you can get um, are a really good value for money around 40 um, some of the Arab lists have some cheap uh, light lancers so any of the mid tier to cheap end lancers represent great value for money so noble lancers number nine on my list at number eight at number eight on my list i'm gonna go for the light horse archers which i think is a fantastic unit good price at 32 i'm probably also going to bunch it together with other light horse like the light javelin horse at 24 is a bargain and the nomad light horse archers at 40 they're excellent as well so i'm kind of kind of say these units these light horse units are excellent value for money but i'm going to pick out perhaps the light horse archers because um they are just so annoying um they can really disrupt units quickly especially if you've got a bunch of them this is a pretty crazy build this is um the indo-parthian army in late antiquity and you've got elephants and a lot of horse archers and, and archers as well so these guys are, are really gonna help you win with this kind of army because they are just they're just how and what do you do i mean if you've got cavalry lined up against them you can charge them but then you're just gonna be running after them um and then wasting points because they only cost 32 and if you let them surround you then you know three units um can easily cause a cohesion check in one turn so they are really really quite hard to play against javelin horse as well um i could easily put in at number eight but the thing about javelin horse is you don't usually get a lot of them so in terms of being a game changer quite often they're not that although they can be really really useful at the end of games they are I, th I think when i did uh, a top 10 list for high middle ages i think javelin horse came in, in in my top 10 uh because they can charge fragmented units rear charges uh when infantry units are depleted at half strength etc disrupted they can often route units and cause drops so they are really really good but the thing about the light horse archers is often you get a bunch of them so then that's when they can really change the game or change the way that your opponent is going to approach the game so overall i think they probably deserve to be in before the javelin horse um although average unprotected average unprotected so it's just the bow really gives you a bit of a difference but that's quite nice because it just means that you uh, you don't have to be adjacent to the enemy and you can just fire at a little bit of a distance so that can be useful at times i will also say that the nomad light horse archers are, are pretty good as well uh and the unarmored horse archers but 40 when you start paying 40 for light horse uh although these ones actually are classed as as cavalry so actually they they represent good value at 40 because these light horse are the same price so i think the what is it the unarmored uh, the nomad light horse archers yeah okay these look these guys they're probably not uh as much value for money as some of these other units those unarmored horse archers are actually really good value for money because they're classed as calves so that means you can get the flank attacks 
so they're they're really good as well so all of these types of units um it's when the game starts to change really i i always think that you know you've we've been playing a classical infantry dominated armies legionnaire pike dominated uh battles uh same in biblical really with the hoplites uh and the arrows uh from those bow those bow units um but then when you get into this period it starts becoming more cavalry based skirmisher based light horse based and um, so this really represents kind of the evolution of of the game and of the battles that you're going to be playing in because the battles become a lot more dynamic uh units all over the place <laughs> Okay, so anyway, I'm going to put them at number eight. At number seven on my list, it's going to be the Massed Archers. This lowly unit, I think, can be very, very effective on the battlefield. I've talked about them a little bit during my videos analyzing armies in late antiquity. I've said I've grown to like them more and more. When I talked about the evolution of the game, um, when I, we looked at the light horse and the light horse archers, um, I think this kind of unit also represents kind of an e evolution in the way battles uh, are fought. Um, because you don't see them so much in classical. We talked about this recently on the forums. Don't see them so much classical. And then once you get to LA, late antiquity, um, High Middle Ages, and also we use them a lot in Medieval and High Middle Ages, and that's when I really started to to like them um, because they're great at disrupting cavalry. A lot of infantry that you face is only protected. It doesn't take a lot to disrupt units from missile fire. Three units, and especially with skirmisher support, can easily disrupt a unit in one turn. So... Really, the, the, the way the game engine is set up, it's all about disruption rather than casualties. It's all about disruption. So if you can disrupt a unit, that's a big advantage to you because that means that maybe on the next turn or turns to come, you'll fragment it and then it becomes useless and it routes. So these kind of units, if you can focus your fire, they can really give you a good advantage. Put them on rough grounds, put them behind infantry. Um, you know, even even if they're on, I don't know what this map's like. This is, yeah, this is very open. But I mean, if you could get your mast archers to this kind of area, and you often see that in, in battles because it's very rare that a battlefield will be just completely open. So. If I can somehow, maybe with these these archers, this is the, I think it's the Parthian army I'm using here. Uh, if we can get our massed archers somewhere around there, then regular infantry is going to, suffer because it's uh it's gonna be at a disadvantage on rough ground okay medium foot would um would do some damage but on the whole you know in on on a hill on rough ground in the woods on um anywhere like that it's gonna be a really good um spot for your mast archers and i think um they're probably under valued underused not used properly but um if you want to become a good player then learning how to use your master archers um can really help you win more battles so number seven on my list at number six on my list i'm going to go for the nomad horse archers these are the Khazar type. This is the Khazar list. And they cost 44. And we've got 19. I don't 
think I've ever seen so many. I mean, gosh, it would be tough fighting this kind of army. I think now, now that we're getting um, along in the list and we're at number six, we are talking about game-changing units. And I would say that these units are game-changing. They just completely change the way that you set up, the way you um, play, how you conceive the battle and what you want to do and how you're going to play. It just changes everything, having a horse archer kind of army. I know a lot of players don't like the horse archer armies, but you have to say that they really just, the whole dynamics of the battle uh, changes. And um, it's hard to play against them because they're very mobile. When you've got so many, um, they can easily disrupt enemy cav and infantry. As I mentioned when, when I was talking about the light horse archers, um, maybe just three of them can disrupt a unit in one turn. So they're just pretty powerful. And then the advantage you have as well is that compared to the light horse archers, which is light horse these are regular cavalry, which is a big plus, and only four points more there over your Nomad Light Horse Archers, which are overpriced, really, because they're only Light Horse, so that's why I like the cheaper type. But these guys are bona fide cavalry, so not only can they disrupt the bow, they can also go in on the charge and get flank attacks. When you've got so many just hold um, a better unit in place for one or two turns and then use your numbers to come around. So they are a real menace on the battlefield for sure. And a good price, 44, it's a pretty good price. Um, when I was talking about the light horse archers, uh, I mentioned the unarmored uh, horse archers. I don't think those units are in many lists. Um, but they're also cavalry, but probably I prefer just to pay the four points extra because these units are protected. So you get a little bit of a bonus from being protected. So I would just say that these units are, are actually better, better value for money, really. Protected cav with the bow, awesome combination, justifiably they go in at number six. At number five, at number five on my list, I'm going to go for the elephants. They look fantastic, don't they? This is a very colorful army. This is the Sassanid 477 AD list. It's quite popular amongst players and also tabletop gaming a lot of um, the tabletop players own this army so it's a very popular army and it just looks great doesn't it a lot of units that you just don't see all together anyway are the expert armored horse archers the elephants not many armies in la have elephants um, mast archers and cataphracts as well so some, some interesting combinations with this army in my opinion I think that, similar story to what I said about the Roman legionnaires, I think that elephants do better in LA than they do in classical, because in classical, they're up against an awful lot of spear and pikes, which they don't do well against. And there are a lot more swordsmen um, in LA than there are in classical, so they do great against swordsmen especially on impact and the other thing i would say about elephants in la is that they are a great counter against cavalry and cavalry really starts to dominate in la a lot of cavalry heavy armies like this one for example and you're just struggling a little bit when you've got to play against elephants because as uh, most of you will probably know, but a few might not, you can't get flank attacks with regular cav on elephants. 
So that is a big advantage for elephants. Plus, obviously, they've got their uh, disordering factor. So whenever cavalry are close by adjacent, they get disordered. So they are a great counter to cavalry heavy armies in the period. So they're kind of like doubly dangerous, really. Dangerous against all, all the uh, non-spear, non-pike units and dangerous for the cavalry. Okay, you've got to protect them. Um, I actually played a game recently against Tomoy Gozen. Uh, he likes this army and uh, I managed to disrupt the elephants and then fragment them with my skirmishers and archer fire. And then I charged in. It was quite dramatic. It's a pity I didn't record the battle. I charged in with just, I think it might have been javelin horse or light light horse archers. And even though it was only 0% chance to win um, and 84% chance to draw, something like that, they took the cohesion check because of my charge and they routed and not only did one elephant route, they disrupted a nearby infantry unit and they routed the other elephant that was nearby that I think was already disrupted. So you, you they are very much sort of hit and miss. Uh, sometimes they can be really effective, great, but other times uh, they double drop quickly and then they cause cohesion check um, two squares all the way around um not just one that i think they're the only unit in the game where when they route they cause a two square cohesion check so you do have to hope that they don't disrupt but they are a real menace a lot of the time so for me i mean i don't usually take three out i might do in this build i i take usually two one or two is what I usually take, but probably I would take three in LA um, because I probably they can be more effective, as I've said. So, yeah, just justifiably, they go in at number five. At number four, at number four on my list, I'm going for an infantry unit, and it is the Dismounted Noble Lancers. At 54, tremendous value for money. You've also got the upgraded version, the dismounted armoured Noble Lancers at 72. But in my opinion, the dismounted Noble Lancers at 54 do a great job. And if you look at the stats against your standard swordsman like Sassanid Foot, they're 50 up on impact, 100 up in melee. That will be the same against Arab foot, Bedou foot, swordsman units like that. Imitation Legionnaires, they're 50 up on impact, 88 up in melee. Pictish Spear, they're 50 up on impact, 62 up in melee. And the other issue with the Pictish Spear is, as a lot of infantry actually of the period, it's medium foot, so that they also suffer that. Uh, minus one on the modifier for cohesion checks fighting heavy foot in the open warband okay they're 60 down on impact which isn't loads but then they're 100 up in melee that's a big jump even against roman legionnaires roman legionnaires are 78 they're 100 down on impact but you would hope they could hold and a lot of the time they will and then they're 25 up because they're superior quality offensive spear. So you just don't see, I, I don't think there's hardly any, if any, units like this in LA that are superior quality offensive spearmen. They're pretty rare, especially at this price. So they do a great job and they will beat most, if not almost all, infantry units on the battlefield. So they're justifiably on my list at number four. Now, one thing I would say, this is the Byzantine 551 army. Perhaps some players wouldn't take that much infantry. They'll just go all lancers because you've got some fantastic lancers 
in this list. You've got the Byzantine Lancers, which are armoured above average Lancers. You've got the Armoured Noble Lancers, which we all know about. Superior quality Armoured Lancers. And then you've got the Veteran Byzantine Lancers, which are even better, 72. And then some excellent units, the Expert Armoured Horse Archers. So, plus the Noble Lancer, which is great at 48. So, a really nice kind of cav contingent there. And we can still take out more Byzantine Lancers, more Armoured Noble Lancers, and some more Noble Lancers. So, perhaps some players would take very little infantry, and they might not take these units out, actually. So... They might not be so well used a lot of the time, but if you want to mix it up, you want a little bit of infantry plus all your lancers, because you've still got, how many have I got here? 1,600 points. Uh, that's about 11. Uh, roughly 17 in, uh, cav units, which is a heck of a lot. Plus, I've got about 10 infantry units here so it's a pretty well balanced army and you know whatever goes up against because they also do well against cavalry and they do great against elephants as well so they're very useful units being spearmen and offensive spearmen so yep number four a great unit and worth taking out at number three on my list, I'm going to go for the Noble Cavalry. Absolute bargain at 44 because they are superior quality. And that superior quality gives them a plus 50 for the uh, POA. If you compare them to other units, Armoured Cav only costs four less and yet they are plus 25 up on armoured cavalry and also something like byzantine lancers are 54 so they're 10 points more and yet they're better in the melee round they are plus 13 up on byzantine lancers in melee so yes the lancers get the impact but the impact doesn't always give disruptions so once the melee kicks in they are actually plus 13 up because the Byzantine Lancers are just above average quality. So a real bargain, really one of the most cost-effective units of the game. The only negative, really, is you don't get enough of them. I mean, in this, I mean, this is the Frankish 496 list, I think, and we get four, but in a lot of armies, you only get two or three, perhaps. So that is a pity. Very few armies you get four to six. Uh, we got four in this one. And uh, they they really are very, very good value for money. So definitely worthy inclusion at number three. Number two. At number two on my list, I'm going for the Shield Wall Defensive. This unit represents great value at 36 points does very well against a lot of the infantry that you're going to find in la such as arab foot and sassanid foot because they're evens on impact but 50 up in melee imitation legionnaires they're 100 down on impact but the legionnaires are all about impact and if they survive impact which they often do they are 38 up in melee Got to remember the Imitation Legionnaires cost 51. Against Warbands, 110 down on impact, but then 50 up in melee. And again, Warbands cost 58. This unit only costs 36. So they do really well against most of the infantry that you're going to find on the battlefield, even against Roman Legionnaires. Okay. 150 down on impact but then only 25 down in melee and the legionnaires cost 78 so really great performance and they do very well against cavalry as well 
You don't find this unit so much in LA. It's a unit that you find in armies in early Middle Ages, post 600 AD. This is the Ostrogothic 493 AD list. Uh, when I looked at this army, I said that I'd take out the Frankish allies. But if you take the base build, you do get a couple more of these units. And we've still got a whole load of armored noble lancers together with four massed archers. You don't often get a lot of massed archers with many armies. Plus, we've got nine skirmishers. So it's a great mix there. You know, with these spearmen, all the lancers. Master archers, skirmishers. It's quite. It's quite an interesting army. I'm going to try it out and uh, and see how it goes. So I think they deservedly go in at number two on my list. At number one on my list, the best unit in LA, according to me, I'm going to go for the expert armored horse archers really good unit can do it all it's superior quality and armored so it's fine in melee and obviously it's got the bow and arrow as well so it can do a lot of damage with missiles especially on enemy cavalry you put two or three of them together focus fire on a cav unit and more likely than not in a turn or two you will disrupt it um, also because of its quality and armor when you look at the stats it will actually beat most of the cavalry on the battlefield one-on-one, -on -one, especially if it can survive impact against lancers, for example. Once it survives impact, which it often does, then um, Byzantine lancers, 62 down on impact, but then it goes to 38 up in the melee round because it's superior quality versus above average for the Byzantine lancers. Even armoured lancers, 100 down on impact, but then evens in melee. So holding against armoured noble lancers. Noble cav, 50 down on impact, but then 25 up in melee. Armoured cav, evens on impact and 50 up in melee. So average lancers, lower end cav, mid-tier cav, it will have the advantage and even against the better cavalry even cataphracts cataphracts 100 down on impact but then only 50 down in melee 50 down is not that much not that much so very very good all-round versatile quality unit and also i think it's it's good to put some cavalry units high up on my list because LA really becomes, this is the switch. We, we move away from more infantry-based battles to the domination of cavalry on the battlefield. And this unit at number one represents that very well. So they are a good price, 66. Um, sometimes you don't get many. So in a lot of lists, you only get two, maybe um, not much more than that. This is the um, Armenian 253 AD list, and we, we managed to have up to 10. Um, but then we really don't have almost any infantry, just, just your irregular foot and some massed archers. So, um, yeah, these units are going to do all the damage, and we've got some cataphracts to back us up. But this is my top 10. You might have um, a different idea. Put your comments below. Um, maybe you've got something else to say about some of these units. Um, yeah, please let us know. And I will probably do an update at some point. Although saying that, w w it's not likely we're going to get um, a DLC out. I usually do updates when we get DLCs. And I think it's just um, high middle ages. We're going to get a couple more in the near future. And then one more in the biblical period. But anyway, we'll see. I might revisit it um, later on in the year. But this is my top 10 for now. And I am going to do a top 10 of the worst units in LA. So stay tuned. Take care.
Thanks a lot for watching.